uh, or one of the side effects of innovation in healthcare is that sometimes great breakthroughs create um, new issues for us to contend with. And that's been true in patients who are treated with B-cell receptor signaling antagonist drugs like ibrutinib and idelalicid. They've had unprecedented responses in patients. They've truly prolonged survival for many patients, but there continue to be a large number of patients growing as those drugs uh, become more prevalent who will relapse. And that's a challenging situation because the survival of those patients has been quite poor in data that was presented at this meeting and, and previously. So venetoclax works by a differing mechanism of action. Its target is BCL2, and it's an oral drug like the others, which makes it very appealing to patients. And because it works by a different mechanism of action, it's potentially efficacious in patients who fail these two other uh, new drugs. So we undertook this study, a phase two study of single agent venetoclax to see how well it could work in patients who were either progressing during or after prior therapy with ibrutinib and idelalicid. Patients were accrued to two parallel cohorts that uh, were determined by their most immediate prior B-cell receptor signaling therapy. There were 43 patients in an ibrutinib cohort, 21 in a delalicib cohort. And the response rates that we observed were uh, quite good, similar, um, but not quite as uh, high as been reported in previous studies of venetoclax in B-cell receptor signaling naive patients. The overall response rate in patients in the ibrutinib cohort was about 70%. 62% in the idelalicib cohort, which was a bit more um, uh, early in their therapy, a median of nine versus 13 months. At the time of the analysis this summer, we saw that 80% of patients were alive and progression-free, 90% were alive. In the median duration of remission, progression-free survival, and overall survival, hadn't yet been reached. Many patients are concerned, of course, about the safety of the drugs they're taking, as are their physicians. And it was encouraging to know that we saw no new safety events, even in this uh, very difficult to treat patient uh, population. Most of the safety events were similar to what's been observed in earlier studies of uh, venetoclax, largely hematologic toxicity that was manageable in some cases with dose holding, in other cases with administration of white blood cell growth factors, drugs like Neupogen and Neulasta. The most significant risk with venetoclax treatment in the past has been a problem called tumor lysis syndrome. We saw only one case of laboratory tumor lysis in this study, no cases of clinical tumor lysis, and that was manageable by medical means and didn't result in the patient discontinuing therapy. So overall, a very encouraging outcome uh, that really tends to improve the outlook of a, of a, of a challenging and um, increasingly important patient population.